In example 3 and 4, we want to do the exact same thing. Construct sign charts for our functions, identify maxima or extrema if they exist. But we've got two cases that are going to be a little more complicated. In example 3, things are a little more complicated because now we have a function that's the product of two expressions. So in order to find h prime of x, we're going to have to apply the product rule, meaning that first we'll take the derivative of the first function. times the second function, and then we'll add a second term where we take the first function, x minus 3, and then we multiply by the derivative of the second function. So differentiating, we get the derivative of x minus 3 is 1, so we get e to the x plus x minus 3 times the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So that e to the x is constant uh, in those two terms, or common between those two terms. So we can factor out e to the x, leaving us with 1 plus that quantity x minus 3, or e to the x times x minus 2. So we'll take that set it equal to 0 to find any inflection points. First thing to recall is that e to the x can never equal 0. So we have no result for considering e to the x equal to 0. But when we consider x minus 2 equal to 0, we get one result, which is x equals 2. So in this case, even though we had a more complicated derivative, we only have one partition number to consider, and that's at x equals 2. So we'll choose test points above and below. We'll evaluate the function, the derivative function, at those points. So we'll find h prime of 0, which is going to be e to the 0 times negative 2, or negative 2. So for values less than 0, or less than 2, our derivative is negative. We'll evaluate h prime at 3, and in this case we get e to the third power. So our first derivative ends up being positive. So in this case, we have a function that starts off decreasing, then at x equals 2 levels out for that instant, and then changes to increasing. So we've got a local minimum occurring. So we can say that our function is decreasing on negative infinity to 2. Our function is increasing on 2 to infinity, and we have a local minimum at x equals 2. Because again, we see that behavior where our function is decreasing because the derivative is negative, then changes to the derivative being positive, so our function changes to increasing. In example 4, We've got the function m of x equals 3 times x to the 2 11ths power minus x to the 3 11ths power. So this is going to be 6 11ths, x to the negative 9 11ths when we take the derivative, minus 3 11ths, x to the negative 8 11ths. So what we have common between those two terms is 3 over 11 times x to the negative 8 over 11. So factoring that out leaves us with 2x to the negative 1 over 11 minus 1. And then we want to consider this function set equal to 0. So meaning we'll consider the first term, or the first portion of this, set equal to 0, and the second portion. So when we look at 3 elevenths times x to the negative 8 over 11, rewriting that with a positive exponent, we get 3 over 11 x to the 8 over 11. So since there's no variable in the numerator, this can never be equal to 0. But we do get a case where this could be undefined. So this will be undefined whenever x equals 0, so this gives us one partition number to consider. 
taking 2x to the negative 1 over 11th minus 1, we can add 1 to both sides. Or actually, let's rewrite this with a positive exponent. That'll make this a little bit easier. So we can rewrite this as 2 over x to the 1 11th equal to 1 if we add that 1 to both sides. And then multiply both sides by x to the 1 over 11. So we need to figure out what x is, meaning we need to undo the fact that we're raising this to the 1 11th power. So if we were to raise this to the 11th power, then 11 times 1 over 11 would give us x to the first, which means we have to do exactly the same thing to the other side. So we get 2 to the 11th power, or 2048. So these are our two partition numbers to consider. At 0, our function is undefined. Our derivative function is undefined. And at 2048, our derivative function is equal to 0. So we can choose some test points in between. 2050 or any number bigger than 20, 2048. We can choose x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. So if we evaluate the first derivative at negative 1, we'll get approximately negative 0 0.15. So we get a negative result. If we evaluate the first derivative at 1, we get 3 elevenths. So we get a positive result. And if we evaluate the first derivative at 2050, we get approximately negative 0. Point, let's see, 1, 8, 0. So 0. 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 zeros, and then 9. So we get a very small negative number here, but we've got a negative number. So we get negative results, meaning our function is decreasing again. So we look at what's happening if the direction of our function is changing. So here we have a function changing from decreasing to increasing. Here we've got our function changing from increasing to decreasing. So we potentially have a maximum and a minimum occurring here. But at 0, our first derivative was undefined. So we want to go back to the original function and make sure it would be defined at 0. In this case, it would be. We get 3 times 0 minus 0. So since the original function is defined at both of those points, we know that our function is increasing on 0 to 2048. decreasing on negative infinity to 0, union 2048 to infinity, and that we have a local minimum at x equals 0, since our function is changing from decreasing to increasing, and a local maximum at x equals 2048, because our function is changing from increasing to decreasing.